Good afternoon. My name is Peter Shoemaker. I am the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences here at Seton Hall University. And it is my great honor to introduce our afternoon speaker, Michael Garrity. Mike is New Jersey's Chief Information Security Officer and the first director of the New Jersey Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Cell, NJCCIC. Director Garrity is responsible for providing strategic vision, leadership, and oversight for cybersecurity across the executive branch of New, York, of New Jersey state government to ensure information security initiatives are aligned with the state's business goals and objectives. The Division of Cybersecurity focuses on identifying threats to state systems and assisting departments and agencies in managing risk to acceptable levels. A component organization within the Division of Cybersecurity is the NJCCIC that acts as the state's one-stop shop for cybersecurity threat intelligence, alerts, information sharing, and best practices. It serves both government and the private sector, including the business community, academia, municipal and county governments, and private citizens. It is the first state level information sharing and analysis organization in the US and has been recognized nationally as a model for all other states. Please join me in welcoming Mike Garrity. Thank you, Dean. And, and thank you to the entire Seton Hall team to make this uh, conference um, possible and, and everybody that's tuning in today and, and welcome. So as Dean said, I'm Mike Garrity. I'm, I'm the director of the NJ NJKIC, the New Jersey Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Cell. I'm also the state's chief information security officer. Um, the NJ NJKIC, for those that are not familiar with it, is the state's one-stop shop for cybersecurity information sharing, threat intelligence, best practices, um, anything and everything to do with cybersecurity. So whether you're a state government organization or whether you're in the private sector or just an individual, um, where you're that one-stop shop. We were created in, in, 19, in 2015 um, uh, under executive order uh, to be this one-stop shop and to lead and coordinate New Jersey's cybersecurity efforts. That's how important we think cybersecurity is to the state economy, um, to the health and welfare of our citizens, and to the security of their assets. And so this NJ Kick was created. We're organized under the Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness. So unlike any other state in the country, cybersecurity is organized under Homeland Security here, where everybody else it's under organized under IT. And the reason we do that is we think of cybersecurity through the format of all threats, all hazards, all the time. So our job obviously is to promote that statewide awareness of cyber threats, facilitate the adoption of best practices, and then you know partner with you, academia, with the public sector, with private sector organizations, and with the goal and the mission of making New Jersey more resilient to cyber attacks. So I, I wanna stop there and just say, I've got the best job in the state of New Jersey. Um, it is the most exciting job. It's the most challenging job. You can pull your hair out on this, as you can tell um, by the video here, um, but it is the most exciting job in the state of New Jersey and, and probably the most rewarding because I get to protect not only my information that the state has, um, but also my families, my friends, my partners, my you know neighbors, and even yours. So um, that's my responsibility: is making sure we keep everything secure, whether it's you know your information or critical infrastructure throughout the United States. I also want to talk about the the career path that I made and how I got here. You just don't land in in a CISO role. In fact, when I went to college, there was no such thing as a chief information security officer, and information security was really at the beginning. Um, so I, I graduated, I taught for a couple of years, math, physics, and chemistry, um, figured out that I wasn't going to do that the rest of my life. So then I, I took the test and I became a New Jersey State Trooper. As a young trooper, I, you know, I got involved in computers. It became a hobby. I was building systems, building networks, and, and the like. Um, and then I read a book called The Cuckoo's Egg by Cliff Stoll. And the Cuckoo's Egg by Cliff Stoll should be required reading in every cybersecurity curriculum there is in the United States um, at the undergraduate level because it talks about exactly what a career is in cybersecurity based on a real life incident that Cliff Stoll, who was a grad student at Cal Berkeley, um, solved 
um, and and you know involved you know West West German hackers and and Russian hackers hacking into U.S. systems you know all over the place, and so I, I really recommend that book. That got me to thinking: if somebody reported a cybercrime in New Jersey, who would handle it, and who was prepared to handle it? State police didn't have a computer crime unit in in in, in the office, um, and so I started that in the early 1990s. Uh, made some major cases. The first um, internet search warrant that we did for an ISP, an internet service provider, um, the first search warrant and uh, for you know evidence in in a homicide on an online service, America Online back then, um, and made some major cases. Um, that led to an offer from Bell Labs, Lucent Technologies, to come there and work for them. And over there, I was the network intrusion detection manager. So I set up network intrusion detection systems throughout their global network and, and monitor those. That led to some more big, big opportunities. Um, Prudential Financial came later um, and asked me if I would go over there and start a high tech crimes unit um, because they were being hit with all sorts of frauds and other um, nefarious activities over the internet. Um, so I started there and, and the rest is history. I've been a CISO in, in a number of different places. I've been a CIO. Um, today I'm the CISO for the state of New Jersey and the director for the NJ Kick. Um, and it is a fantastic job, as I mentioned. So what do we do in the NJ Kick? We protect the Garden State Network. The Garden State Network is all the different systems and all the different agencies and departments within the executive branch of New Jersey. And as you can see by this map here, this is a map from 2020 up until yesterday um, with the number of attacks against the state infrastructure, okay? And I say the executive branch infrastructure. Um, most of it obviously coming from with IP addresses from within the United States, but we see attacks coming from all over the world. My job is to make sure we can block those attacks. We don't want any one of them getting in. Um, millions and millions and millions of them happen, you know, when it's almost 10 million on, on a monthly basis that we saw uh, earlier this year. We're also responsible, and I, I know we've got an election coming up. Um, we start, we launched an online voter registration system um, back in September 2nd. And we monitor that and we protect it. We help to design the cybersecurity. So as you can see, you know, all the attacks against the, the online voter registration system that we detected over the past, you know, month and a half or so. Um, so that's what we're responsible for. And I wanted to show these to show you that there's real work um, and, and practical things that we're doing, whether it's the Garden State Network and the infrastructure there, or whether it's the application that you're going to register to vote on. Um, so these are really important, critical assets for the state of New Jersey to consider critical, critical infrastructure. And that's what our job is, is to protect that. So, you know, more things that, that were happening, uh, if you were reading the news the last week or so, um, CISA, uh, Department of Homeland Security, um, put out some major alerts that um, uh, threat actors were chaining together some vulnerabilities against systems, um, against an NF5 um, uh, you know, infrastructure and our Citrix infra infrastructure. And so what we do is we take that threat intelligence that we see and we can actually monitor our network to see if those attacks are actually being perpetrated against us. And as you can see, they are on a regular basis, uh, you know, with some spikes there as well. The good thing for us is we patch them, but we also block them at the firewall so that they can't get in. So they're not successful. So these are some of the things keeping up with you know, the threat activity that's going on is really important as well. And then last week in the news, there was a, a big takedown of a TrickBot network, um, some of it by US Cyber, Cyber Command, supposedly that's what open source intelligence says, um, but also Microsoft got involved and they, they use some legal tactics um, based on trademark and copyright infringement to take down a bunch of servers. Uh, those servers were command and control servers um, for the TrickBot, you know, remote access Trojan uh, or the variants thereof. When we look at some of those servers, and, and I just have some listed in the United States here, we can see that 12 command and control servers were actually being run out of New Jersey, just up the road from Seton Hall and Clifton, New Jersey, for the most part, right? So it's really important to know that when you get malware, 
It's not necessarily communicating with China or Russia or North Korea. Um, it's communicating with servers that have been hacked and set up as command control servers right in our backyard. And so our job is to help disrupt that as well. And those are some of the things that we work with attorneys in the attorney general's office to do, law enforcement, including the state police and, and the FBI. So it's a really interesting function for the state of New Jersey, this NJ kick. Um, and, and as I said, you know, it's the best job in, in the state of New Jersey. You know, as we go forward um, and as we are today, we're in what we call the fourth industrial revolution. And this is why I think cybersecurity is so important today. Most of us think of it as hacking into, you know, IT systems. Um, and the disruption that can be made to databases and networks and things of that nature. But this cyber physical and biological convergence where we have the Internet of Things, we have addictive uh, uh, additive manufacturing, we have autonomous systems. Think of, you know, the self-driving cars that we'll soon have. All of those things make up the fourth industrial revolution. If you go back through history, the first industrial revolution uh, was really, you know, steam power. And then, you know, we had the assembly line in the 1920s or so. And then the information age started in the 1950s, 1960s. And now we're in this fourth industrial revolution where we've got this convergence of the cyber and the physical. And so cybersecurity becomes more important because now these things have public health. And, and other aspects and negative aspects that, that really can impact um, the way we live in our life. So, you know, in order to get to a career in cybersecurity, um, there's all sorts of different pathways. I mentioned, you know, mine was, you know, through, uh, you know, a, a background in physics and math, but also, you know, through law enforcement. And, and I listened to some of the sessions earlier and everybody had a different career path because the CISO role didn't exist. Um, today, there is an uh, initiative for or cybersecurity education. It's called the NICE framework that identifies jobs that are necessarily, but it also identifies knowledge, skills, and abilities that we're looking for in individuals. So if you're not familiar with the NICE framework, if you're thinking about a career in, in cybersecurity, I would suggest you go there and look at the requirements in, in the skills, knowledge, and, and abilities. There's all sorts of jobs in, in, in cybersecurity. Not everybody is a pen tester. Um, in fact, there's very few pen testers and we don't need everybody to be a pen tester. There's all sorts of other work to do that, that needs to be done. And so those careers are, are you know, there. Um, they're really important. And as I said, you know, not everybody is the pen tester, but you know, you you'll you'll have jobs as far as communications. Okay, being able to take really technical um, uh, information and make it so that a layperson can understand it. So being able to translate that is a really important skill to have, and it's a job that exists within the cybersecurity system. Just like in healthcare where everybody's not a doctor and we don't expect everybody to be a doctor, there are administrators, there's nurses, there's practitioners, there's, there's hygienists, there's all sorts of different roles. Same thing in, in cybersecurity. There are all sorts of different roles. Um, don't just you know lock yourself into a corner or paint yourself into a corner with a certain set of skill sets. There's all sorts of skills that are necessary. I talk about skills, but I think the most important thing that that I see in, in cybersecurity, and this is any job, is you know the this is a very busy slide, but I want to focus at the bottom. Um, personal effective competencies. We need those more than we need skills. We can always teach skills, but we can't teach character. So you need to have integrity in a security job, whether it's cybersecurity or any other physical security job. Integrity of the individual is paramount. You need to have initiative. I mentioned that you know I did the first search warrant of an internet service provider. That internet service provider ran um, an operating system or ran their ISP on, on something called FreeBSD, which is a variant of, of Unix, an offshoot of Unix. Unix was created at Bell Labs right here in New Jersey, up in Murray Hill. Um, I knew nothing about it. And so what I did is I took my troop car, went up to Murray Hill and, and searched out the people that invented Unix so they could teach me how to take down this ISP correctly. So you better have that type of initiative. 
Um, one of the things that I mentioned a staff meeting, um, we do weekly activity reports. One of my uh, staff members uh, mentioned that, you know, he was setting up stuff in his own Amazon Web Services environment. That's the initiative that you really need because it's going to be a, a career of lifelong learning. Um, you never stop learning. Others have said on, on, on some of the earlier sessions that you know when they get home from work, they start reading about cybersecurity because it's continuously changing, changing and, and that's really, really important. So as we move through this, you know, professionalism, dependability, adaptability, courage, um, all of, and leadership is, is really important. And we can build on the academic competencies and all those other skills that you would get. So as we go through this, um, one thing that I teach um, all my staff is don't think like a technologist, think like a criminal. Don't think like a de defender, think like an, a, cr a criminal. An attacker has the motivation, means, and opportunity. If you ever watched a, a, an episode of Law, Law and Order, um, you know that's in the second half of the show. So the motivation to do something, usually it's financial motivation, but we'll see, you know, terrorist groups, we see all sorts of motivation there. Um, the means, okay, the capability to carry out an attack, and then the opportunity. Now, we don't control the first two, the motivation or the means, for the most part but we do control the opportunity. Whether we are, you know, have, have a good security awareness program, whether we have unpatched systems exposed to the internet, those are the opportunities that we provide them. The attacker is not necessarily targeting an individual or an organization based on the fact that they're valuable. They're targeting them because they're vulnerable. OK, and so you always say, why would we get ransomware on our system? It's because you were vulnerable to it. OK, and, and you probably have cyber insurance and attackers are going to make money. There's also understanding the attack and, and, and the, the life cycle of the attack, just like you would do if you were robbing a bank. You would make sure that, you know, the guards weren't there. You would have an escape route. You'd know um, when the cops came around where the cameras were. You would do reconnaissance. Bad actors do that on the internet as well and do that with cyber crimes. They weaponize, they deliver, whether it's an email with malware, and then they run their exploit, they do the compromise, and then they take command and control and make sure that they have access into that system on an ongoing basis. So our job on, on the other side is the defense and the response, making sure we have those safeguards in place, making sure that we're doing offensive security. I mentioned pen testing making sure that we're testing our systems before the bad guys find those vulnerabilities um, and, and exploit them. And then also having an incident response plan. Um, Director Mueller of the, of the FBI back in 2012 said there's two types of companies, those that know they've been hacked and those that don't know they've been hacked yet. Um, and you know, so it really goes to the point that everybody's been hacked. So with all of these things, um, we provide lots of opportunities in the NJ Kick. There's lots of opportunities. Our goal is obviously to work with the public and private sector. Um, we want to work with academia to make sure that students are getting the training that they need to have a successful career in cybersecurity. Um, we have internships available. We have apprentice jobs available. Um, so there's lots of opportunities and training that we also provide in the NJ Kick. And with that, um, I'll leave you with a way to connect. Obviously, you can get us via email or online on the web. You can call us and you can hit us on Twitter. And we're on all sorts of other social media platforms as well. So I want to thank you again for attending. Um, and, you know, best of luck in your careers. And if there's anything that we can do, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Have a safe and, and, and be well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Garrity, for giving us uh, an inside view uh, in, into a world that uh, many of us only know from from television and uh, and novels. Um, I know that you have to um, you have to leave to go to another event. So uh, thank you again for joining us, and um, you know maybe next time we can welcome you on the Seton Hall campus. For all of our participants, um, we are taking a pause right now. Uh, until 2 p.m. So there's an opportunity for you to to get lunch and then we'll be reconvening um, at 2 p.m. Um, back here again. Thank you very much. Thank you.